In this video, we talk about Amazon keyword research. This is relevant if you're looking for products to sell, but also when it comes to creating your listings. And also I discuss with you a couple of secret techniques that will really help you with your Amazon business. Hello everyone, it's Sajad Stelp, Amazon FBA. So let's get started. I had a lot of comments asking about keywords in particular. So let's go through it right now. I'm on the Amazon Marketplace and I've also got Helium 10 opened up. Now Helium 10 is a product research tool, but it also has a lot of other functions. And one of them is to try and find keywords. So what, what do I actually mean by that? Let's go through an example first. So let's say we're on the Amazon Marketplace and let's say we're searching for yoga mat. So that's the search for this product. Now, any of these products could be doing really well in terms of revenue, 50, 60, 70,000. But the thing is, not all of their sales will come from people searching for yoga mat. There'll be many, many other searches. For example, you can check Amazon auto suggest. So if you just press space, you can see what people search for the most. How do I know this is what people search for the most after the word yoga mat? It's because Amazon is in the business of making as much money as possible. So they will only put the most common searches here because customers are more likely to obviously click on them. So yoga mat thick, yoga mat bag, yoga mat strap. These are all very, very important for you to note down for a product, not only when you're searching for products, but also when you're actually making your listing. And again, more on that in just a minute. So that's what keywords are in essence. Now, every single keyword phrase has a certain number of searches per month, a search volume. Now this can vary and obviously month to month it will change, it won't be exactly the same, but you can get a rough idea and a rough ballpark estimate. Remember, we only want estimates, we don't want exact results. For example, people now often ask me, how accurate is the keyword research software or how accurate is the software in general when it comes to assessing demand? Well, let's check it right now. Let me just minimize this screen and let's click on X-ray. So you can see here for these products, these yoga mats on the first page, you would expect very high revenue because it's only the root keywords here. And you see here revenue figures of 80,000, 20,000, 100,000, et cetera. That's to be expected. But the important thing to note here is the revenue figure, that's not exact, how can it be exact? We don't know for any of these products how many customers will purchase tomorrow or the day after that. And if one of these listings increase their price next month, they may get less sales. Sometimes, weirdly, they may even get more sales because people may perceive it as a product of more value. You see how it can be a little bit complicated, which is why you don't want to overcomplicate the process. You only want ballpark figures. That's all we're interested in. Now, that's the revenue. What we can do here is take one of the best selling products here. For example, this one, which is Amazon's choice, this top plus yoga mat. We can scroll down. And what we can do is take the ASIN number, which is the Amazon identifier for that particular product, the Amazon kind of code number or barcode. We take that, copy it, and then we use Helium 10 Cerebro tool. You'll see it here under keyword research, Cerebro, reverse ASIN lookup. We type in the ASIN here. We make sure it's amazon.co.uk and we click on get keywords. Let me just zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see. So click on get keywords. So it takes kind of 30 seconds to a minute for this to load up. And what we will get is a list of all of the main keywords for this product. But what's very important is the keyword phrase, but also the search volume. And I'll explain to you why again in just a minute. Now, as we scroll down, note, I've not put any filters on at all. I've not changed anything here because at the moment you don't need to. I'm just doing it for kind of uh, teaching purposes, just to show you what we're trying to do here. And immediately we see the main keyword phrase is yoga mat search volume 51,000. What does that mean? Well, again, it's an estimate, but an estimated 50,000 or so searches are made for that word yoga mat. Now, you might be thinking those are just searches, they're not purchases, absolutely. But remember, Amazon is a place customers go to buy products, not to research, not to read up about them. For example, most of you watching who are Amazon customers, you'll know that the last time, last few times you've ordered something on Amazon, I imagine it's taking less and less time, right? To actually order the product sometimes even less than a minute. You just quickly scroll through the top couple of listings and you order, or you order the same thing you've ordered previously. So it could be a, like a, a repeat product. By the way, that's an advanced research kind of hack. If you can find products that people repeatedly purchase throughout the year, that can be a massive bonus and it doesn't have to be grocery items. By the way, if you want advanced kind of research hacks like that, just comment below. I'm more than happy to do a separate video on that. Now, what we wanna do here is sort by search volume. So let me click on search volume. And then what we can see here is something very interesting. The top 
A search here, technically speaking, is hot tub. Now, this is where uh, we talk about kind of the qualitative analysis rather than quantitative. It's not all about just numbers here alone. You need to make it kind of relatable to your product when you're researching. So, for example, we know a hot tub has nothing at all to do with the yoga mat, but sometimes some of these products that we do a reverse search for, they may pop up in the search somewhere. So one thing we can do here, because you can see here, number four exercise bike as well, which is not appropriate. So what we can do is we can ask uh, Helium 10, same, same kind of setup here, but what we want, word count minimum one instead, because sometimes it could be a single word for which people search for a particular product. And we want the organic to, uh, ranking to be, let's say max 10. What that means is for this, particular search like yoga mat, we want to make sure that the product that we're researching pops up in the first 10 searches. So for example, if I'm scrolling down here to foam mats, I want to know if for the keyword phrase foam mat, this yoga mat comes up in the top 10. So that's what I'm doing here. So I just select that. And then what I do is I want that to be organic searches only for the time being. And then I click on apply. And now I should get much more relevant searches, which I do. Yoga mat, yoga mats, plural, very important that people are searching for the plural as well as the singular. Now, most people say, um, especially if you're looking on YouTube, experienced sellers will also say that Amazon will automatically look for the plural, but I don't care about that. I still wanna make sure somewhere in the listing, I still put the plural version as well or in the back end, etc. I like to do that anyway, just as a matter of course. You've got exercise mat here, yoga mat, workout mat, Interestingly, just exercise in general, the mat pops up, uh, Pilates mats, fitness mats, etc., etc. So those are our, our important keywords. Why this is really important is because in a massive niche like yoga mat, you want to try and work out what are the kind of sub niches. So let me break that down for you further. So we were just talking about a yoga mat that does 50,000 in revenue. And let's call it, uh, I can't remember what the price of the product is, but around 2,000 in sales. So 2,000 units per month on average. Now, for this keyword phrase, yoga mat, singular, this pops up high in the organic search, which is really good because that's where you're going to get a massive amount of sales. And we know the search volume for that is actually around 50,000 as well. But what's important here is this will only contribute to a certain portion of the sales. So if this was the entire revenue, this circle here. But what's important is that will only make up a proportion of the sales. So let's just draw a circle here to illustrate that further. Here's our circle. So out of all of those 50,000 sales, what I'm saying is that yoga mat will make up a certain proportion of the sales. But then there'll be another search phrase. So let's go back to the search phrases like workout mat. So let me open that as a search. This is workout mat and you'll see you're getting a lot of yoga mats again in the search, including this top plus one again. So workout mat is a different search here. So workout mat, and that will contribute to some of its revenue. So you'll see where I'm going with this. And then you'll get all of these other keyword phrases that people search for less. Some people are searching for best yoga mat and there's 280 searches for that particular keyword, but they're making some sales from it. But the take home message here is that yes, there are some what they call long tail keywords that might result in one sale or two sale, but the majority of the sales, perhaps more than 75%, this thick region here, this is all actually only around maybe three or four keyword phrases. So sometimes I see here on YouTube and there's different ways to do things. I'm not saying one way is right or the other is wrong. I'm just telling you exactly what I do. I concentrate on the main keywords. And I'll explain why in just a minute. Although I've seen on YouTube, people talk a lot about the long tail and it's less competition, but I don't really care about those because um, they make up such a, sh a small amount of sales that contribute to this overall figure. The reason they're making this many sales is because for the main keywords like yoga mat or yoga mats or exercise mat or yoga in general, they're ranking for those keywords more importantly than the ones where there's less search because that makes up the vast majority of the search volume. You can prove this to yourself by literally just adding these figures. How many 200 keyword searches for sports mat do you need to equate to uh, the number of searches for yoga mat? So as an example, that's around, let's call it 50,000 divided by 208, for example. So 240 times more searches for yoga mat 
than the sports map, which go, which explains why for sports map you more only might only get a couple of sales, but you'll get most of them for yoga map. Okay, so let's re reverse engineer the process now. Let's go back to the main keyword search. So we're back here and let's go for yoga mat again. So the key for your product now is that you're gonna run some PPC. Of course, you see here sponsored ads. What that basically means if you're brand new is if somebody clicks on your sponsored ad, Amazon charges you a fee. Now, usually you would expect a sale every four or five times somebody clicks on your product. So it'd still be profitable, but you don't wanna be relying on all of your sales coming from PPC because it will cut into your profit margins to the point you might only be break even. The trick is to use PPC to get enough sales to then rank organically for yoga mat, meaning lower down, these people are not paying to be here. This listing is just here because it makes a lot of sales for the keyword yoga mat, which is why Amazon are thinking, well, let's show this product. The algorithm works out that this product needs to be shown because it converts into sales for that keyword and they're not paying to be here. You need to do that for all your products. You need to be here on page one or if it's a massive niche, page two perhaps, for your main keywords to make those bulk of sales. You want to make sure that out of PPC sales, so let's again draw another shape. Let's say this was all of your sales, all 50,000. You wanna make sure that a good proportion of your sales are organic and you're only relying on PPC for a certain proportion of your sales. There's no exact figures here. You just need enough PPC to maintain your organic rank high up on the first page. And then what you're spending on PPC overall converts to a lot more sales and makes you a lot more profit. So I hope you're following. But again, if you're brand new, don't worry. It takes a better time to kind of get your head around. So that's what we're doing. So what we need to be doing as sellers is maybe yoga mats very competitive and that's completely fine. You get a lot of competing products. It might cost more to spend on PPC, but you don't want to go all the way down to things that are very loosely related or have very, very low search volume. Because you can see here at the bottom, this goes all the way to page 10. So let's click on page five, for example. Um, you can see here, um, there are all sorts of other keyword, sticky yoga mat, for example. Nobody cares about that. There might be a handful of people who want that particular thing, but don't optimize your whole listing for that keyword. You still have to optimize for your main ones because that's where you're gonna get the majority of your sales. Yes, they're more competitive, but you're better off in the long run fighting to compete on those keywords that make a lot more sales and spending PPC and slowly building yourself through the rankings, then going after these ones that make no sales at all. Because if you rank for sticky yoga mat, even if you're at the top of the ranking for that, that word is not gonna get you a lot of sales. So I hope that's helpful and I hope that's making a little bit of sense. What I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm gonna break it down and we'll reverse engineer how can we use this keyword data now to actually find products to sell on Amazon instead of just optimizing our listing because that's very important because it's not really the, the product and the product revenue that's important, it's the search volume because certain uh, words, for example, certain phrases, let's go back to the first page so I can illustrate it as an example. So we know yoga mat uh, has a massive search volume. That's fine, that's to be expected. However, at the same time, supply and demand, a lot of people are searching for it, but there are a massive amount of yoga mats available on Amazon now. And that's fine, you can still see that you can still make enough revenue, however they're getting competitive. A lot of the listings now have well over a thousand reviews. It's gonna take a little bit more time to rank there. Not impossible though, I've done it myself. That sh you shouldn't shy away just because a product looks like it's in high demand, right? But if you have more experience, then it's better you go into that type of niche because there's a lot more kind of upfront investment in terms of actually promotions, etc. However, here, what I would say, apart from yoga mat, the other thing you need to realize is there may be other uh, potential words or phrases like unrelated products that have high search volume, 10,000, 15,000, maybe only 5,000. However, in terms of proportion with the number of competing sellers, there is a better supply demand dynamic in your favor. And that's what I teach my students. If you can find those types of niches, that's where potentially you could do very, very well and where you should spend more of your time. Finally, I just wanted to mention a few of you had asked about the coaching program we have available and it's the first link in the description below. Now, this coaching program, we're making massive improvements to this over the coming couple of weeks. And due to that and due to the value we're providing, we have a lot of students now who are doing six figures and even seven figures. And because of that, we're actually going to increase the price significantly because I'm not only working with customers now, for example, those of you who like me are working from home, 
and you're planning to run your Amazon business, I'm also going to be working with small businesses who have existing products. More and more have been contacting me. And for that reason, the program is going to be the same but the price is gonna be well over 2,000. So if you're interested and you still wanna get in at the promotional price, you can do. And again, just follow the first link in the description below. And just to show you briefly in the training, you've got a list of modules there on the left that you'll work through. So that's the training portal. But with some of these actual tutorials, you get PDFs like the ones I have here below, and you even get my templates, which I leave below as well for you to download. And on top of that, what we focus on is advanced techniques in this training program because it's not good enough now just getting some pictures, doing a quick description, finding a product that's in demand. You have to do a little bit more than that. However, the fruits of your labor are that much more than they were three years ago because if you can get ranking in some of these kind of high demand niches, there are more sales than there ever were before. However, you can only do that if you do everything to a professional standard and that's what I teach you how to do in my training program. And the other thing I concentrate on, for example, when I go through PPC is you have to focus on the numbers as well. That's sometimes even more important. And that doesn't go for Amazon alone. It goes for any business. But don't worry if you've not got any experience. Most of our students had zero experience. I certainly had no experience before I first started. This is something you have to learn how to do yourself. All I'm doing is speeding up the process for you in terms of trajectory, letting you follow a proven system and finally, you're able to check things with us, with experienced sellers. So if you have your product idea, you've done your appraisal, and you wanna say, hey Sajad, look, can you just look over this idea for me? I just wanna be 100% sure. That's what we're here for. And that could potentially save you a lot of cost, a lot of headache, a lot of hassle further down the road. So that's actually what you're investing in. Now I have my email below, and if you have any questions at all about the program, I'm more than happy to help you. But just understand, as I've shown you here, there are different factors involved. So if you're doing a nine to five at the moment and you're making a certain amount of money, let's say 1,000, 2,000 pounds here in the UK, and you want to try and create that same consistent income on Amazon, there is a lot to learn. But when you learn anything new for the first time, it does take a while to kind of get familiar with new platforms, new ways of working. But unfortunately what happens is sometimes people reach out to me and they first saw my videos back in like 2017, 2018. And they're like, Sajad, now I'm finally thinking of getting started, but I can't get going. I'm still procrastinating. And that's fine too. I understand that. But also you have to give yourself a push as an entrepreneur. For example, if you if you had goals that are different to what you're doing at the moment, and let's say you do want to make 5,000 or 10,000 passively with an online business, that's one of your goals. How will that happen in your life if you're still doing the things that you were doing yesterday or the day before? You have to make a change here. And sometimes change can be uncomfortable but trust me, it's the best thing you can do. You have to dip your toe in and get started. And the great thing is sometimes when you invest in a program, because there's other people in the same situation, it kind of motivates you further because you know you made that initial investment, you need to now follow through. You can't just sit on this. So just keep that in mind as well. Now what I'm gonna plan and arrange probably this weekend is a short live stream where we just cover product research. So I'll be doing that as well. If you have any other questions you wanted to ask about the course, you can also do so there just by commenting on the video as I'm actually going through a few techniques. But by Sunday, this offer will be gone and will change to an invitation only coaching program. So I hope that's clear. Make sure you're subscribed because I will be doing more keyword research tutorials very soon as well. Thanks very much for listening.